So, you want to add a loading screen to your prototype. Whether it's processing data, transitioning to another screen, or simply refreshing a page, how you handle the waiting experience can make a huge difference for your users. In this demo, you'll learn how to do the loading effect on a skeleton UI in Protopie using a few opacity responses and the timeline feature. Open the Pi file in Protopie Studio. You'll see three scenes ready. When you click the chat icon in the home screen, we want it to show the loader scene. So how do we do this? First, add a tap trigger to the chat icon. Here you have the option to switch the object to other layers and the number of fingers needed to activate it. Quick pro tip, select the object first, then add the trigger or response. Otherwise, you may forget to assign an object to it and your interaction won't work. After tapping the icon, let's add a jump response. In the jump property panel, choose which scene you'd like to jump to. Select loader. Below are the transition options. We'll cover this in depth in another lesson, but for this demo, choose Slide In. Let's preview. Tap the chat icon and it jumps to the next page. Good job! Another pro tip, if you think the icon is too small for the user, you can simply extend its touch area. Select the chat container in the layers panel. On the right hand side, look for touch area and enable it. Then input the value 10 for all sides. It should now be easier to tap on this icon. Moving on to the loading interaction, what we want is to jump from home to the chat page. To do this, we'll utilize the loader scene. The interaction should happen automatically without any input like tap or drag. Add a start trigger. You can set this two ways. It can be activated after a jump response has been completed or during the jump response itself, and also the option to restart every time. For now, just keep the default options. We cover the various start trigger options in another lesson. Let's do the blinking effect to indicate the full screen loading text. But first, why is it necessary? As considered best practice for UX design, showing users moving feedback or progress indicators leads to higher satisfaction and longer wait times. Protopie allows you to do this. We'll use the opacity response and apply it to our skeleton UI. You have two options, adjust opacity to, which changes the transparency to an absolute value, or you can select opacity by, which allows you to change the object's opacity by an amount relative to its current value. Change the opacity to 50. Now to make the motion feel more natural, Protopie gives you these options for easing. You can even customize these yourself. For this demo, try setting it to ease in out. But we're not done yet. You also need to set the duration. Good thing Protopie has the timeline right next to our interactions panel, right? It helps users intuitively adjust the speed and duration of interactions. Simply drag and stretch the time bar of each layer instead of hard coding values in the properties panel. Try to stretch the opacity layer all the way to 0.8 seconds. Now, let's preview. Looking good! To create the blinking effect, you'll need another opacity response over the same duration, but with a value of 100. Let's duplicate what we have. Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows and customize. But wait, both responses shouldn't happen at the same time. Instead of calculating the start delay, Simply drag the time bar after the first animation. Let's preview. There you go. It blinked. You did it. But only once. And we want it to happen multiple times, right? Select both layers and check repeat. Then set how many times you'd like the blink effect to happen. You can either set the count value to the exact number of repeats you'd like or choose to infinitely loop this animation. Let's set it to repeat indefinitely. Next, set the interval, or how long to wait between repeats, to 0.8 seconds, exactly the same animation duration that we used previously. Let's see what this looks like. For the final touch, you made your users wait, but you'd also want them to stick around. Now you need to add the jump response to the chat scene. Choose Fade. Now you want to know when this jump should happen. 
it's when the blinking animation is finished. Simply drag the dot right after the first three time bars. One final quick pro tip. Is there a way to scroll Protopie's timeline panel faster? Absolutely. You can use the touchpads in your desktop. Hold shift on your keyboard and scroll with your mouse. Is the timeline not big enough? Just expand the interaction panel and drag the dot all the way to the end of your timeline. Let's get a final preview. Our interaction is blinking, loading, and then jump to the chat page. Way to go! Just remember, when creating micro interactions that need numerous responses in Protopy, let the timeline save you time. We hope this helped. See you in the next one.